Danhauser, a small coal mining community in the northern parts of KwaZulu-Natal, residents accuse the mining company of abandoning the community once the coal ore has run out, leaving in its wake polluted water streams and barren land. Before the mine, people were living harmoniously. Before the mine, the land was unharmed. Before the mine, people were able to sustain their livestock uh, without any external factors that might affect their livestock. So we might as well go on and say it is quite an environmental issue because the land uh, and the environment has been, uh, the land rights have been violated and the environment itself has been harmed. Nkanyiso says as a result of ongoing mining and underground vibrations, houses have been badly damaged. The mining right, they say, they should not be blasting 500 meters closer. But because they are not being regulated by DMRE, the Department of Minerals and Resources, closely, they have continued to do as they please. Communities like these bear the brunt of the impact of coal mining in the country. Across the country, we have seen more and more communities challenging um, coal mining as a result of the impacts that they are feeling as communities. And it has become abundantly clear that people are becoming more and more aware of their rights when it comes to um, what mining companies are doing or what mining companies are actually not doing. Mining contributes at least 80% of the country's energy requirements. The stakes are high for not just affected communities, but government and the private sector. A coal mining regions have benefited from the exploitation of coal, with jobs, uh, some of the services that the mining companies have provided. But they now face a bleak future as coal mining production shrinks. But the community is more often left worse off after the coal veins dry out and coal companies oftentimes failing to fix and rehabilitate the damage they've caused. You have the fact that mining has changed and disrupted and in part even destroyed the productive capacity of the land and especially the water. So is there a plan for this transition which is happening and will accelerate after 2025? With the current global climate crisis pushing nations to lower their carbon emissions, the move towards a fair and equitable just transition has never been more key. How can this be done fairly and effectively? Is that it must be, there must be distributive justice, so risks must be borne equally. There must be restorative justice. Communities that have suffered damage must be compensated. And while some action is being taken to hold mining companies to account, life remains a daily struggle for affected communities, barely able to eke out a living and holding on to hope for a better future. Nozindombi Mia, SABC News.